Model steam engines for beginners, part 29. Repairing a cracked spoke on the flywheel using JB Weld 2 pack epoxy resin. Making some leaded bronze main bearings and a special reinforcement plate for the crankshaft bracket. Followed by repairing the water gauge fitting. These video clips are all edited from my series, How to Rebuild a Vintage Steam Toy. The full series is well worth a watch. It's completely jam-packed full of useful information. The flywheel has got a crack in one of the spokes. Now there are two ways to repair this flywheel. The best way would be to drill a hole from the edge of the flywheel down into the spoke and insert a metal plug. But because this flywheel is very substantial and the other three spokes will carry the weight, plus it's not going to be heavily stressed, what I'm going to do is actually open up the cracked part of the spoke and fill it with JB Weld. I started off by using a needle file and then I realised that possibly my life expectancy wasn't going to be long enough to complete this part of the job. So I decided to use a diamond burr in my small minicraft drill. And this made short work of cutting a groove in the flywheel. This is a clip showing the flywheel after I removed the paint. I used a pot of cellulose thinners for this and it took about an hour to dissolve the paint and then I just brushed it off with an old toothbrush. Now it's time to get out the JB Weld. And here is the JB Weld on the board. I'm squeezing out equal amounts from the tubes and now it's a mixing frenzy to make sure that the JB Weld is thoroughly mixed together. After which I apply it to the flywheel, starting with the blowholes around the outer edge, followed by applying a generous amount of JB Weld to the groove that I've carved in the damaged spoke. I'm putting plenty of JB Weld on the joint and I'll remove the excess tomorrow once the JB Weld has cured. So now it's time to go over to the lathe and make the bearings for the engine. Originally this engine didn't have any bearings, it was a steel crankshaft in a steel frame. And over the years it had really worn badly, mainly due to lack of oil I would think, but steel against steel is not really a bearing material. The diameter is now turned to the right size to fit into the bracket, leaving sufficient room for some Loctite to hold it in place. When using Loctite, if you turn the parts to too close a fit, then the Loctite will be squeezed out and will be ineffective. And as usual, I've centre drilled the work, now I'm going through with the drill size which is one imperial size less than 3 16 which is the finished diameter I want. And here is the reamer that I'm putting through. The lathe is now in back gear, going a lot slower, and this is a 3 16 reamer which will get a good finish inside the bearing. I'm going to try the shaft in place, this is a 3 16 of an inch diameter stainless steel shaft. It's just the fit I need it to be, a nice bearing fit and now it's time to part off the first of the bearings. Notice that I use a drill shank in the end of it so that it doesn't drop into the chip tray. And now in exactly the way that you've just seen, I'm producing the second bearing. And once again, I'm using a small drill shank in the end of the bearing to catch it as it separates from the phosphor bronze bar. This clip shows the two bearings on a piece of stainless steel bar that I'm going to use for the crankshaft. Before I fit the bearings to the bracket, I'm going to drill holes in them using a centre drill to form oil holes. This is not really necessary, but it's just a nice touch to have proper oil holes in the bearings. I coated the ends of the bearings that fit into the bracket with some Loctite. And I used Loctite 603 by the way, not Loctite 542, it needs to be a firm retainer for this job. I put a drop of my oil mixture into each of the bearings and then I fitted the crankshaft and I'm measuring the distance between the two bearings because I'm going to make a sleeve that goes over the crankshaft which will just make it look better and make sure that the bearings never drop out of the mounting bracket. I've been adjusting the mounting bracket so that the bearings line up a little bit better but I'm sure the bracket will need readjusting when I bolt it to the boiler. This is a set of bending rollers three rollers and the top one is adjustable to put pressure on whatever's been squeezed through the middle and as you can see I'm squeezing a piece of eighth of an inch thick steel here. If you haven't guessed already you will see why I'm doing this very shortly. While I think about it it's most important when you're using bending rollers to make sure that you have a longer piece of metal than you really need because you cannot bend the very ends of it. 
using the sole set of bending rollers and bending this piece of metal to fit inside the firebox and this is going to be behind where the mounting bracket is going to be. The holes in the firebox were not in good condition and the main mounting bracket for the engine components was very loose. After I've cut the piece of steel that I've just bent to length, this will be used inside the firebox to securely hold the bracket to the outside of the firebox. So using my best engineering skills, I hold the bracket on top of the piece of metal and mark through the holes using a scriber. Over now to the drilling machine, and as always, I'm using a centre drill first to accurately position the hole, followed by a tapping size drill for 6BA. This twist drill is 2.3mm in diameter, and according to all the tables that I've seen, that is the correct diameter twist drill for tapping 6BA holes. This is quite a hard piece of steel, I can tell that because the twist drill is making very unpleasant noises. Thankfully the twist drill survived the ordeal, and here I'm tapping the holes in the bracket using a 6BA tap and as a lubricant I'm using some of my oil mixture which once again is 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil from the supermarket. This mixture always seems to do the trick and I find it quite useful for tapping. In my workshop I have various tubs of tapping compounds but generally I use this oil mixture because the oil can is always at hand. I've drilled clearance holes in the firebox and also in the actual mounting bracket that holds the cylinder and here you can see how it's going to work. The part that I've just made will fit inside the firebox. Over now to a bit of essential work on the boiler. The water gauge has been sealed with car body filler and this is a bit of a mess so I'm using this tool to clean it off. This is not what it seems, it's not a grinding disc as such. It's a rubber wheel that has diamond in it so it is fairly abrasive and I've been very careful not to go through the boiler. And here's the finished job, looking a lot cleaner than it did originally. So now it's time to give the manometer or the pressure gauge the same treatment. I cleaned it up initially using my polishing spindle and I'm finishing it off with some Brasso wadding. Brasso wadding has been available for many years and it's still really good for cleaning metal as you can see here. This manometer has a steel back so I think I'll end up painting this just to stop it rusting. What I'm doing at the moment is checking which thickness of shim washer I need to make it so that the manometer faces forward. And once I get it to face forward, I just nip it up with a spanner and then I removed it because I don't want to break it and it's not quite the right time to fit it yet. And with the boiler and manometer looking nice and shiny, that concludes the episode. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.